bone in my body had shattered. I had a 104 fever for days. My clothes and my bed sheets hurt my skin, which left me lying naked on the bed for days on end. I was cold and shivering constantly, but I couldn't cover myself because of the excruciating pain. These are not my words, but the words of an incredible woman that I have known since childhood. My friend Lizzie contracted dengue in 2013, and in that year, she was one of about 30 cases in the state of Florida. And unfortunately, Lizzie is just one of hundreds of millions of cases that occur globally every year. Lizzie was no match for what came as a result of the mosquito-borne illness known as breakbone fever. For reference, Lizzie is not very sensitive to pain. She has spent her life around horses, had shingles when she was 18, bronchitis, mono, broken bones, and she also has a number of tattoos. I would say she has a pretty high tolerance for pain. The issue of mosquito vector diseases is one that has received increasing amounts of attention in the United States in recent years. You may have heard of Zika, but controlling the mosquitoes that vector Zika is not a new endeavor. As a graduate student, I started working on new technologies to combat these mosquitoes. This is about the same time that my friend Lizzie contracted dengue, which ignited an even greater passion for the research I was doing. What started out as a simple research project turned into a persistent goal to control mosquitoes and prevent disease transmission. The technology we were developing was a mosquito trap specifically targeted at controlling Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. These mosquitoes are infamous in our world because they carry not one, not two, but over 20 different viruses. This includes well-known examples like dengue, chikungunya, yellow fever, and Zika. They have grabbed the attention of scientists around the world, not only due to their ability to transmit, but because of the challenge they present when it comes to control. When it comes to mosquitoes, all species are unique in some way or another, whether it's what they feed on, when they are blood feeding, or where they like to lay their eggs. But it isn't enough for 80s mosquitoes to feel just a little different. They really want to stand out from the blood-sucking crowd. So they like to lay their eggs in small containers instead of large bodies of water like lakes. They feed during the day instead of at night. And they love, love, love to feed on humans. As an insect vector biologist, this presents a real problem. Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus, whom we can now call container mosquitoes, are excellent vectors of disease, and the number one thing they are feeding on is us. This creates a disastrous situation for disease transmission, especially considering that these mosquitoes can be found around the world. To combat this, my colleagues and I believed that controlling container mosquitoes was a question that needed more answers. Our contribution to this growing body of research was, its, was a trap. It took everything we knew about their behavior and it turned it against them. The final product was a small black and red container that contained two insecticides. Here's how the trap works. A female mosquito flies into the trap looking for a place to lay her eggs. She lands on the interior surface of the trap and comes into contact with a lethal dose of pesticide. If she is able to lay her eggs, they are successfully killed by the insecticide mixture, which is also in the trap. When we tested this trap in the laboratory, we got positive results, which showed that we could significantly reduce the number of adult mosquitoes in a treated cage. The next step from successful lab studies was to test the trap in the field. It wasn't going to help anyone if it sat in the laboratory forever. Field studies for the trap are ongoing, but one thing has become abundantly clear while testing. This trap isn't going to work on its own. Controlling mosquitoes is kind of like an art, and you have to try many different control measures until you find the combination that works for that species. The container mosquitoes not only need forms of active control, like traps and insecticide sprays, but they also require community participation. Controlling container mosquitoes is impossible without participation from the community. The immature stage of the mosquito lives in the water, and the container mosquito's favorite place to develop is inside man-made containers. This is how they made it into the US in the first place. They hitchhiked in products like tires. 
They've adapted to develop in just about any type of container you can think of. That includes bird baths, your dog's water bowl, the cooler that's still sitting in your backyard from the last barbecue. They could all be developing mosquitoes. And this is not only a problem for the United States. These mosquitoes are found globally, which means that all that is required to vector disease is an infected mosquito. That infected mosquito feeds on a healthy human causing illness. And that's exactly what we need to prevent. For this, I need you to pay close attention. And if you remember nothing else from me, please remember this. Mosquito prevention has to start with each individual in this room. If every person here today were to go around their home once a week and dump out any containers holding water, it would make future control efforts more effective. Less standing water leads to less mosquito development, which means fewer adult mosquitoes to control through the use of traps and insecticide sprays. However, just as some mosquitoes are resistant to insecticides, some people are resistant to mosquito prevention and control. The research that led to all the knowledge and tools to help combat these mosquitoes is there. Our next job is getting people to use that information. And that's where I need your help. You have to show people just how simple it is to prevent mosquito development by discarding of trash that holds water and dumping out containers around the home. We need to convince our community of the importance of eliminating standing water sources. Mosquitoes transmit disease, plain and simple. If an infected mosquito bites you, they could do major damage to your body. I think it's difficult for us to understand the severity of this, but listen to these words from Lizzie. While I was sitting in the waiting room, waiting to see the sixth doctor, I felt like I needed to call my mom to talk about my will. I thought I was going to die. So there I was, waiting to be called back, talking to my mom about what would happen to all my stuff if I didn't make it through this. Lizzie didn't know what was wrong with her, and neither did doctors. And that's the last thing that we want for our loved ones. And even with an outcome this severe, we still can't seem to figure out the best way to get our message out to our audience. So now the problem isn't, how do we get these mosquitoes under control? It's how do we get people to help themselves? Now we have to overcome communication as a barrier to success. Communication of our research findings can be really difficult for some scientists, and it can prevent our message from reaching the public. To combat this breakdown in communication, we're constantly trying to find new ways to more effectively get our message out to the community. One of the projects we are working on involves taking an established member of a small underserved community, not a professor or a government official, and having them go door to door to talk to their neighbor about the importance of mosquitoes in the area and how they can help. Our hope is that hearing the message from someone they know and trust will inspire action. We're also developing programs for school-aged children that involve search and find activities for water holding containers around the home. The hardest part is keeping people engaged. In warmer climates like Florida, mosquito prevention has to be done year round. It is difficult getting the community involved, but it is a crucial part in the fight against mosquitoes. When working on my research project, I find myself thinking about Lizzie and her experience a lot. It provides a continuous source of motivation for the work that I do. Fortunately, she made it through this mosquito-borne illness, but not everyone does. What if what happened to her happened to you, or a friend, a sibling, a neighbor? Before this presentation, you would have said that you were helpless and that you didn't know how to help. But now you do. You know exactly what you can do to prevent what happened to Lizzie from happening to you or your loved ones. You have the knowledge you need to wage your own war on mosquitoes, and I fully expect you to do that. I've decided to dedicate my life to vector research and public health interventions. I know that not everyone in the room will follow me on that path, but if you decide to be a part of the solution, I believe that we could have a dramatic impact on these mosquitoes and their ability to transmit disease. Thank you.